Uh, we said last week, uh, we didn't finish the message last week because of the way the service went, and we want to try to conclude that message. But also, I promise you that we're going to do today a Q&A, a time of question and answers. So uh, I'm hoping that I can spend about 15 minutes to 20 minutes, <laughs> uh -huh. 15 to 20 minutes to finish this message this morning. Hear what I said? I said, I'm hoping. So hope is evolving. <laughs> and I hope that Washington will not tax me if I don't finish in time. Uh, yeah, 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 you guys, okay, let, let's just, ah, no, that will just fall out of my head, okay. But anyway, so I'm hoping to finish in about 15, 20 minutes, again, hoping, and if we do that, then what we're going to do is go ahead into the time of question and answers as we promised. But if something happens and we are not able to finish everything we set out to do, there is still next Sunday. Amen. Is that all right? Yes. Thank you very much. I had a very reluctant yes, with great reluctance. Having said that, now let's just bless the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you. We did not take our times before you for granted. We thank you so much for your love and your word which you've given us. Lord, as I just reflect on your word, where you say that you have settled everything in heaven. It helps me to understand there is nothing else for you to do except that you encourage us to step up in faith to receive everything that you've already done. And so this morning, Lord, my prayer is that, that your faith will arise in our hearts as the day star. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That every man and every woman under the sound of my voice will come to that place of totally, completely believing you for who you are. Help us as mortals. Help our unbelief. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Oh, it is hot. I'm already hot. Man, praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, I started last week a message called, uh, that I called the burning bush. And we did not finish it because I did not want to overfeed you. So if you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to Exodus chapter 3. I am not going to attempt to recap the entire message. That will not be possible. However, I will just give a very brief summary and then move on to what I need to conclude this morning. In Exodus chapter 3, beginning from verse 1, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. And basically recapping from last week, just a very brief summary. I said to you last week that this bush that was burning but not consumed speaks to us of three different things. Number one, it speaks to us of Israel. And let me just show you a scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 4. In verse 20, that helps us to understand what I just said. It speaks to us of Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, in verse 20, the Bible says, But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace out of Egypt to be his people and inheritance as you are this day. So as Moses was looking at that burning bush, First, God wants to let him know the bush you are looking at is burning but not consumed. Represents the life you left behind. It represents Israel that you left behind in Egypt, that you are wondering what had happened to them. God wants him to know that even though the affliction was coming upon them, they are not consumed. 
They are multiplying. They are growing. They are increasing. First message. Second message from that whole experience was that God was showing us through this prophetic illustration of how the church will be challenged, how the fires of affliction will come upon his own church. However, he has said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, that, the, that I will build my church and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I was just thinking about this over the weekend, and I just thought, we used to sing a song long time ago. I don't know if we sang it here. I don't know where I got this song from. Way long back. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. Where are you coming from? This is what Jesus God is trying to say to you. Listen, things will come against the church. Preachers will fall. Men and women will fight. Doctrines will change. All manner of things will happen. We enter dark ages. We come into light ages. All kind of, But at the end of the day, the church of Jesus Christ will be alive and well and unscathed in Jesus' name. So that was the second thing that God was trying to show Moses. And then the third part, which I need to go to the scriptures again to show you here, is the picture of the believer. The picture of the believer. First Peter. I did not read these scriptures last week. First Peter chapter 4. Look at what it says here. In verse 12. So first, the burning bush that was not consumed speaks about, the, about Israel. It speaks about the church. And now in particular, it speaks about the believer. First Peter 4, 12 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fairy trial that is to try you. Did you hear that? There's a fire, there's a trial that's to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. What did he say? He said, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you also be glad with exceeding joy. So three things, Israel, the church, and the believer. Now, the amazing thing here is in that scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse uh, 13, he said, rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. And as I thought about that, I want to help us this morning to define the word suffering. Because so many people have different opinions as to what godly suffering is all about. I want to take the mystery out of that this morning so you can, I can make it plain. Are, are, are you, you hear me? What is suffering? What is Christian suffering? Simple. This is what it means. It simply means the price you and I pay for the integrity-based choices we make. End of quote. The price we pay for the integrity-based choices we make. That's what suffering is. Now, did you guys understand what I just said? The price we pay for the choices that are godly, for the integrity-based choices we make, that is what suffering is all about. Case in point, my friend said something about me, he came back to me, I don't like what he said, I have a choice. I have a choice. I can choose not to react to what I heard. It's painful. Oh, man, I like to give them a piece of my mind. Oh, my goodness. I want to give them a five-fold ministry. Grab their throat. That's a choice. But as a man of God, as a woman of God, I choose not to respond like that. I am pained because in my human flesh, I want to deal with it now. That's suffering. Suffering is God is giving me a clear choice. Buy the car, pay cash, or do this, or go and borrow money from Brother Tunde Loye. Where God speaks that clearly. Now, Tunde Loye can deliver the cash to me now. Instant gratification. God 
I don't know what this guy is, God is going to do. If he's going to do it this month, next month, next year, I don't know. So the pain of waiting on God is suffering. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I'm trying to make it plain for you. When Peter says that we suffer with Christ, that is what he's talking about. Jesus went to the garden. He had a choice. He could look at that cross and say, oh, my God, I know we're talking about this together. I know we planned this from eternity ages past. But what I'm looking at, this mean looking Jews, I'm sorry. I'm exiting from this plan. I'm not going that way. That was a choice. But he chose not to make that choice. He chose to remain on the plan, thereby suffering, because integrity means wholeness. It means completeness. Are you following what I'm saying to you? This is huge. So, we rejoice for partaking in Christ's suffering. Now, I gave you an example last week which was so fitting. The boss monitor. Who endured 10 minutes of humiliation, of pain, when she could, like me and you, I've said to those boys, I will show you who's in charge. After all, I'm a boss monitor. You little urchins. You don't even have beards yet. You don't have, you, you don't have arm, yeah, your armpit. What, you, 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 you're talking this crap. What's wrong with you guys? She could have done any number of things. But she sat there and endured the pain, thereby suffering for Christ. But look at what Peter, what Peter said in that verse 13. He said, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed. See, our problem is we don't know when our glory is going to be revealed. We don't know when, but it will be revealed. But when it is revealed, you may also be glad with what? Exceeding joy. See, you rejoice in the pain. But when the reward comes, no, 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 no. It is with exceeding joy. That madam now, I guarantee you her life has changed. 600,000 US dollars. Are you kidding me? $60,000 worth of vacation package. And we don't know what Hollywood is going to do yet. But because somebody has to write the story and make a movie that they're going to make you all pay for. So are you getting the point here? So God was showing Moses that the bush that's burning will not consume. Now let me tell you why the bush cannot be consumed. Then I'm going to tell you how you and I can be that bush and we're not going to burn. The reason that bush could never have been consumed. Oh my God. Say to me, see after me, say God, God has rigged the system. Has rigged the, the people that's rigging elections, they, 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 they learn from somewhere. God has rigged the system. I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to show you something now in a minute. He has rigged the system. There was no way that bush could have burned or could have been consumed. It's, it's not possible. Now, Hebrews 12, 29 tells us that God is a consuming fire. So we know the fire that was burning was God. Now let's see something else in Deuteronomy chapter 33. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 33, verse 13. <laughs> this is amazing. This is Moses giving his benediction. To the children of Israel as he was about to exit the scene. 